Trigonometry. This video is about trigonometry. I hope you're excited about that. Okay, we said before what, uh, what trigonometry is. It is the study of the relationships between the angles and sides of a right triangle. Now, if you ever took some type of geometry class or some sort of maybe in high school, you learned about trigonometry, you might have learned this very odd and strange mnemonic device. So, ka, Toa. Now, I'm not sure how much that really helps you because it's kind of hard to remember just that, but if you can remember Sokotoa, then you can remember sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I want to first do in, the, um, in this video is review what sine means, what cosine means, what tangent means, and we're going to see how those can be applied in some scenarios, particularly when we want to draw something on the screen in terms of something called polar coordinates. We're going to look at this thing called polar coordinates. We, we always draw things in Cartesian coordinates. There's this x, y location, there's this width, there's this height. We're going to think about polar coordinates. So, Sokotoa, what does that mean? Well, let's say we have a right triangle. That means a triangle with an angle that's 90 degrees, a right angle right over here, pi divided by 2. And there is some angle here. Now, often angles are written in sort of the world of notation as the Greek letter theta. So you might even see in some code examples float theta equals, or you could always say float angle equals. Obviously, you can name variables whatever you want, but theta is a common symbol or term for an angle. OK, so we have this angle, theta, and this side of the triangle, this is the opposite side. It is opposite from the angle. This is the adjacent side. It is adjacent to the angle. And this is the hypotenuse. OK, so here's our right triangle, angle, adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse. OK, what is sine? Sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. What is cosine? Adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is opposite divided by adjacent. So these formulas come up again and again in many different scenarios. Uh, one scenario in particular that we're going to look at not in this video is a swinging pendulum. If you think this is a pendulum, this is the force of gravity on the pendulum pointing down, but this is the direction of that the pendulum is going to move. You can see we've made a right triangle here. We need the force of the pendulum, which is a component. So we're going to do lots of stuff. There's going to be lots of diagrams involved in things that we're going to make that suddenly have a right triangle in them. And we have to say, ah, we know this side of the triangle, but not this side. Oh, and we know the angle. Or we know the sides, and we don't know the angle, right? Different scenarios, we're going to know different things. And if we know the sides, we can get the angle. If we know the angle, we can get the sides, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what's going to come up again and again. One scenario that I want to look at in this video, this hopefully less than 10 minute video, is looking at polar coordinates. Polar coordinates is a place, a, an opportunity for us to use the um, basics of trigonometry in a sketch. OK, so what do I mean by polar coordinates? So let's say we have a, a, a Cartesian coordinate space. Now I'm going to draw a traditional one, not a, a processing window. But we'll map that in a moment to a code example within a processing window. So this is a two-dimensional uh, Cartesian space, OK? Two-dimensional space. Now, we might have, we have an x-axis. We have a y-axis. We could say, hey, this is the point uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, <laughs> I don't know, uh, right? This is the point 5, comma 4. That's its Cartesian coordinate. It has an x of 5, a y of 4. So everything in this space we could think of in terms of what's its x value, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 4, right, of its x and y. A polar coordinate is a different way of thinking about a location in two-dimensional space. Instead of describing an x and a y, that is Cartesian, a polar coordinate describes an r and a theta. What do we mean by that? An r and a theta. So you can get anywhere on the screen by saying, hey, go to this x and go to this y. Or you could say, 
rotate by this angle and go to this radius, right? So this is a way of um, thinking about uh, locations on the screen. Now, here's the problem. When in processing, if I go to say, hey, let's draw a circle somewhere, I can't say r comma theta, right? Processing's drawing functions, point, vertex, ellipse, line, rect, they only accept Cartesian coordinates. So if we want to think, sometimes we want to think in terms of polar coordinates, right? When would we want to think in terms of polar coordinates? Well, what if we want our motion to move like this? Well, that could just be changing the angle. Instead of saying x plus plus, like x plus plus moves this way, angle plus plus would rotate the object. r plus plus, or r angle rotating, and like what if we want to do a spiral if the radius shrinks while we're rotating? That's a spiral pattern. So we could get spiral motion very easily by thinking in terms of polar coordinates. But then how do we draw polar coordinates? How do we set something at a polar coordinate? Well, let's look at how we're going to do that. Let's say we know something is at a particular theta with a particular r. So this is my polar coordinate r comma theta. Well, this is the y value, and this is the x value. Boy, did I draw that terribly. <laughs> we can make a right triangle. The Cartesian coordinate is x comma y. If we know r comma theta, how could we get x comma y? Well, what is sine of theta in this instant? Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is y, hypotenuse is r, y divided by r. Cosine of theta is adjacent, which is x, divided by r, x divided by r. OK, now we're really, this is super exciting. OK, what's happening here? We could solve for x or y so easily, right? I don't know if you like doing stuff with equations, but if you like doing stuff with equations, you can see here, just multiply each side of the equation by r, right? y is actually equal to r times sine of theta. x is equal to r times cosine of theta, right? If I multiply this side of the equation by r, the r's cancel each other out, and I have y equals r times sine theta. So this is a formula. This formula right here, this simple, <laughs> simple formula says if I know the r, the, the radius and angle of a polar coordinate, I know the y. If I, and since I know the radius and angle of a polar coordinate, I know the x. So we could think in terms of polar coordinates and draw in terms of Cartesian coordinates. And that opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, so let's take a look at an actual example that does this over here. OK, hello again. Now we're over here. Um, OK, so let's just say we're going to have some global variable called r. r, in this case, let's say is going to be 50. And we're going to have some angle. I'm just going to call it a, which is going to be 0. Stupid pen. <laughs> OK, now I'm going to make a, uh, I forgot to draw stuff here, a black background. And I'm going to translate just for, to the center of the window, because I think that'll be simplest. And then I'm going to draw a circle. I can't draw it at r comma theta. I'm going to draw it at something called x comma y. So now, how do I get x comma y? I know r and angle. I want x and y. Remember? Formula right over there. <laughs> x equals r times cosine of the angle. Y equals r times sine of the angle. So now that we've done that, I don't know, make sure our circle is white. Oh, uh, what did I mean? Oh, oh, we need to declare these variables. Oh, I'm just not over here. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I was typing for a little while. Sorry about that. Ugh. Uh, this one's going to have to be fixed, but I'm going to just keep going. So um, we have a little circle. Now, you, the, the radius is only 50, which isn't that far. Let's actually draw a line, just so we can see that line also. Uh, so we can see there is our, <laughs> let's make the radius a little bit bigger. Right? There is our object at a polar coordinate. The, it's a radius of 150 and an uh, angle of 0. What if I change the angle to pi divided by 4? There we can see it's a 40, uh, 45 degrees rotated. And what if I do something like say, hey, let's apply angular velocity 
angular acceleration. Let's all those rules of angular. Uh, oops. All those rules that we used before, we can apply here. Now we have this, whoa, it's like you're swinging something super exciting in the air. Um, so, okay, so what have we got here? Look, this looks strangely, oddly, like the just, uh, and, and I'm going um, to use a constraint here to limit angular velocity between 0 and just, say, uh, 1. That's probably too big anyway. But um, so. Um, what's interesting about this example is this looks remarkably familiar. It looks kind of like the example we just did. This is just, we could use translate and rotate to create this exact same effect, but here we chose, let's actually, we want to kind of be in charge of the x, y positions of objects. We don't want to just let translate and rotate and the transformations do it for us. We're using math, polar to Cartesian coordinate transformations. Different scenarios require different options. It's a nice to be able to kind of do uh, both of them, and that was a, kind of an insane uh, Hot, large um, acceleration for me to constrain to. Okay, so uh, as an exercise, what I would suggest for you to do is try to think of some type of pattern. A spiral pattern is a good one. But if you were to, what happens if R changes by Perlin noise? What happens if the angle changes by Perlin noise? What if you shrink the angle, grow the angle? How could you um, create some type of motion path that is different from just like moving in a perfect circle. What, what, what ways could you vary r and vary the angle to create different kinds of motion that you couldn't do so easily with just um, uh, moving an object's position around? OK, so uh, I think we're in good shape. Now that we understand trigonometry, the next thing we're going to do in the next video is see how sine and cosine, how the, the properties of those functions um, um, can map to oscillating motion, to wave patterns. Great. <laughs> Goodbye.